Okay, welcome back everybody. This is your weekly update on everything that's going on in the markets. We'll be looking at some stock market news, some gold and silver news, some cryptocurrency news, uh, to try and make sense of what is going on in the world right now. So let's jump straight to it. And starting with market performance. We're looking at the S&P 500, which is pretty much the American stock market. And you can see there was a big run up to about Wednesday and then it pulled back. Interestingly, looking at gold did the same thing. So we had a big run up to Wednesday and then it pulled back for the week. And even more interestingly, the same thing happened in crypto. So we saw this run up into Wednesday and then it pulled back for the rest of the week. So it's not often that we actually see all these asset classes correlated with each other, which is uh, quite an interesting thing. And how did they do for the week? Well, stocks in the S&P was the biggest loser for the week, um, going down 2.7%. Gold uh, was probably the winner for the week, and that was a 1.4% increase. Silver finished about 1% up. The crypto market was pretty much flat at 260 billion, and Bitcoin a slight pullback of 1%. Okay, so the first chart of the day, we can see this is actually to do with the pandemic. So this is daily new cases. It started slowly, then obviously from March, and then from March onwards, we can um, distinctly see there's a pretty of a straight line coming up here. Um, and this is daily new cases right now. So this is a bit of a worrying chart, um, which is probably why the markets are a bit uneasy right now. Looking at the headlines, we can see global economy will take 12 trillion hit from the coronavirus, says the IMF. The International Mon Monetary Fund has said the global economy will take a $12 trillion hit from the pandemic after slashing its already gloomy growth projections for the UK and other developed countries in 2020. This is the unemployment rate in America. And as you can see, it goes back to about 1950. And all of a sudden we have this huge spike right up here and this takes unemployment to just over 15 percent so this now is the highest unemployment rate since the great depression nearly 100 years ago the atlanta fed have a forecast for q2 gdp and they're saying that the economy is going to contract by 46.6 percent so this is a huge drop. Again, we've probably not seen something like this for over a hundred years. Now I do actually want to pull your attention to a story that it actually happened about a month ago, um, but it's actually a really, really big story which many people might have missed. And it's to do with the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, but it was to do with Paul Tudor Jones, which is actually one of the world's top investors. So he is a billionaire investor with over a five billion net worth. Let's take a look. Long time you were a skeptic of Bitcoin and some cryptocurrencies, but you recently appear to have changed your mind about that. What happened? Well, COVID happened and the great monetary inflation happened. And that made me begin to think about how do you want to be positioned in your portfolio going forward. So that's really what tripped my interest in, in Bitcoin. Um, and you have to realize, if you just think about, say, Bitcoin versus cash, right? Bitcoin, when I think of stores of value, I think of it four ways, purchasing power, trustworthiness, liquidity, and portability. And that, that's kind of the, the categories I put it in. So when it, comes to, when it comes to trustworthiness, Bitcoin's 11 years old. There's very little trust in it. We're watching the birthing of a store of value. And whether that succeeds or not, only time will tell. Uh, what I do know is that every day that goes by and Bitcoin survives, the trust in it will go up. Uh, if you take cash, on the other hand, and you think about it from a purchasing power standpoint, if you own cash in the world today, you know your central bank has an avowed goal of depreciating its value 2% per year. So you have, in essence, a wasting asset in your hand. So uh, Bitcoin, I think it's a, a great speculation. Uh, I've got 
uh, something between one and I think just over just over one percent of my assets in Bitcoin. Uh, maybe it's almost two. Uh, that seems like the right number right now. Uh, it's not for me. It's not the greatest. It's not the you know the great cure for the, for all the monetary ills, et cetera. It's a great speculation. That's what I would say. Bitcoin is. Right. In other news, we have Ethereum. So Ethereum is launching a second upgraded version. So Ethereum 2.0, and it's almost ready, uh, which is going to be huge for the Ethereum network. Now, Ethereum powers most of the tokens, so hundreds and hundreds of, of tokens on the blockchain. So this is really big news for Ethereum and Ethereum investors, and I'll keep you updated on this one. In the chart of the week, we're going to be taking a look at the Dow Gold Ratio. So what is the Dow Gold Ratio? Well, it's um, how many ounces of gold can buy the Dow. And what that tells you is um, what's overvalued and what's undervalued. So the Dow and the gold are generally uncorrelated. So as the Dow or goes up and stocks go up, gold generally comes down and vice versa. So this is the Dow gold ratio going back all the way to about 1920. Um, and as you can see, it goes, uh, stocks have big rallies, then stocks have the crash stocks have big rallies, stocks have big crash, uh, and so forth. Um, this was the 2008 crisis here, the crash. This was the dot-com explosion in stocks. Um, big crash happened um, in the 80s. Uh, one of the, that was Black Friday. So one of the biggest drops, uh, single day drops in history. Obviously we know about the, uh, the Great Recession and the Great Depression. Um, so what does this tell us? Stocks go into bubble territory every so often. And as they're going into these bubble territories, that is a sign that you probably should be selling some stocks as stocks are overvalued. We can see here that pretty much as it crosses the 15 mark, so as soon as it takes 15 pieces of gold to buy the Dow, that for me is a bit of a signal that stocks are becoming overvalued. Um, and this is where we are today. So we have crossed over this mark. Obviously the pandemic has brought it down a bit, but it's pretty much sitting at this 15 level. So this does say that stocks are still overvalued historically. So let's be honest, the overall picture is not great. Uh, I would actually call this an economic winter. And this might be going on for some, quite a few weeks, probably many months, um, could take a year or two to fix. Um, but economies always go through these cycles. They go through the spring and the summer, tailing off into the autumn or the fall, into these economic winters. And the winter, that's pretty much just where we are right now. And we're gonna finish up with some good news because obviously um, in a winter economy, there's lots of bad news. So let's finish with something positive. A couple of news headlines here uh, from Positive News. We see that New Zealand declares itself virus free. Um, so that's great. And the other news story, a study finds being kind could actually make you live longer. So being kind, could make you live longer. Being kind could make you live longer. And with that being said, that is the time to hit that like button. Okay, so that wraps up the weekly news. And just to say, if you found anything useful in this video, then hit that like button because it really helps out this video and the channel. If you want to keep learning about money and investing then be sure to subscribe and if you've got any questions or comments post them below now and i'll see you in the next video all right cheers guys mm -hmm.